Hi and welcome to Straight Out of Camera, proudly sponsored by Fujifilm South Africa. It's episode 5 and the genre we are chatting about today is architectural photography. Joining me live in studio is Managing Director of TechSmart.co.za, Mike Hubert. Mike, how are you doing? Hi, Isley. All well. How are you? Very well. And in Cape Town, we've got commercial photographer Leon Westhuizen. Hi, hi guys. Good hi, to see you. Gentlemen, we're chatting about architectural photography. Leon, if you were thinking of this genre, what would be the sort of key aspects that you would look at? Uh, for, for myself, the most important thing about architectural photography is to uh, d- to differentiate myself from uh, the, the way that everybody else sees architecture because it's not just a functional building. Um, I had a great conversation with a gr- group of ladies I did a photo walk with in town uh, in the in the last week, and we discussed this exact point: How do we go ahead and make it our own? Um, and that that basically means going beyond photographing the thing and and delving into the motivations of why we would want to do so. Um, and and that gets into either picking out architectural details or styles. Do you prefer going telephoto and shooting abstracts, or do you want to show the entire thing? What is it that that drives that that compositional? urge and and that dictates the way that you treat the images if it's going to be black and white um, or color if it's going to be daytime or nighttime and and you'll develop your style and your preferences according to those things rather than just photographing buildings so architectural images shouldn't just be aesthetic and graphic but they also should provide a dynamism of movement playing with lines lights and shadows to provide an interest and a consideration to the hierarchy of the levels and areas that are important to capture. Yes, definitely. I think also if, if you look at the history of photography, one of the oldest uh, surviving camera photographs is in many respects an architectural photo. It's, it's one called The Window at Le Grand by Frenchman Nicofort de Nepis. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I pronounced that right. But anyway, it's taken in 1826 and with an exposure time of eight hours. That's quite sure. something else. It's a heliographic <laughs> image which used what they called bitumen of Judea, which actually hardens onto a pewter plate and you wash it off afterwards. But yes, um, definitely I think uh, architecture has played a major role in establishing uh, photography as a craft and still plays a major role if you look at, for example, Instagram accounts and many people just loving to go into cities and capture buildings. The, the thing about architectural photography that I find most intriguing is is how people integrate with the space. Do they stand outside and look in as a tourist almost, or or do people get drawn in? Do, do they themselves as photographers go and explore that space? Uh, that's what differentiates the different accounts for me and where, where I find the interest mostly is, uh, is people's perspective on that same space that they're standing in. Definitely, definitely. Mike, international photographers that you could recommend that shoot the genre? I think a guy shooting right now is called Marco Ferranini. He's a Japanese-based photographer. Every skill that kind of defines architectural photography, he seems to have it, especially when it comes to capturing the abstract. Uh, South African, Guy Tillen, um, he documented those sometimes very bleak, run-down, decaying buildings all across Africa. If you can check out his book called Avenue Patrice Labumba. A uh, famous life photographer, W. Eugene Smith, he did a two-week or three-week project on uh, um, Pittsburgh, which turned into a three-year project, basically capturing all the people and the buildings inside the city. In many respects, then also Peter Mugu- uh, Makubani here in South Africa with Soweto. Mm. It might not be that it's architectural photography per se, but it's definitely the buildings um, and the city itself forms part of the, the, the photographs. It's the th- extra character in the frame. And then another book I got stuck in over the week is um, American photographer Rob, Roger Ballin's Dorps, where he explored the small little Dorpies in the Platteland of South Africa in the early 80s. Now, regardless of you what, might, what you might think of um, his later work with, uh, for example, the Antwoord, or perhaps you know the exploitative nature of his photography, Dorps definitely manages to evoke a certain nostalgic emotion. I agree with the, the Dorps one from uh, Roger Bell, and it's a really interesting take on the way that people see architecture and, and the, the character of a particular set of architectural structures um, in towns in South Africa in this case. Uh, there's also a similar kind of thing that another photographer did, uh, and I'm trying to find his name now, but the, the idea was Shack Shik, so it, it, it was making uh, Shantytown 
it, it treated it almost like a fashion the, where the buildings became a, a fashionable background and sometimes the subject of the image themselves where they where they take can mm -hmm. um, labels from 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 cans and and replicate those almost pop arty kind of a, mm -hmm. a fashion just to make the spaces more interesting and super lively and colorful and mm -hmm. i find that the, the way that people personalize those spaces have become a, a theme so those those are very interesting ways of, of looking at architectural photography, not just as buildings, but also as spaces that people use. Yes, of course. Uh, Leon, I think you touched on an interesting aspect is it's not just always the outside of the building. It's very much the interior too, isn't it? Correct, yes. Follow us on SOC underscore live on both Instagram and Facebook, where we will have links of a photographers featured by Mike. Um, Leon, architectural photography ha is built on the principle of symmetry. What is our photographic challenge for this week? Well, I'm glad that you mentioned it right now because symmetry is one of those things that that's either really easy to do or really difficult, uh, depending <laughs> depending on how much of a obsessive compulsive control freak you might mm. uh, label yourself as. Uh, but symmetry is definitely one of the <clears throat> one of the fun things that I'd like to um, challenge people with to go and explore. And when I mean by symmetry, not just things that are even in the picture, but but really go and set it up so that when you when you set up for a symmetr symmetrical image, make sure that you are absolutely directly in the middle of something, um, so that so that you don't have to edit that later on. That will really get you um, to to focus on where you position yourself, which is something that I, I can't stress enough. With architectural photography, a millimeter to the left or the right might actually change how things line up and and you will become far more appreciative of the way that architectural styles and and, and designs come to the fore when you when you start to position yourself in certain places lines and things converge that you might not have otherwise noticed and um, along with that while you're trying symmetry try horizontal and vertical symmetry aim your camera anywhere but try and keep things either symmetrically left and right up and down or if you uh, enjoy shooting in square try it try doing um, symmetry across a diagonal, which is compositionally also very interesting. Mm. So joining us in the studio today is Raphael de Cut, a Johannesburg-born, bred and educated photographer. He's a professor of political science at two institutions, as well as an honorary research fellow at the Helen Sussman Foundation. As a child, Raphael received a German Iloka camera as a hand-me-down, and from there immediately took to the art of photography. Today is here to chat to us about architectural photography. Raphael, welcome. Oh, it's delightful to be here. From your photos shared on Flickr, it's easy to tell that you have a lot of experience in shooting buildings in many cities across the globe. Do you have a favorite city to shoot in, perhaps? Yes, I think I'd say Vienna, um, followed by Prague um, and uh, Seattle. It's definitely not just the Art Nouveau aspect of those cities. It's also a little bit more, isn't it? Yes, it's um, the fact that you've got so many layers of uh, architectural style. Um, another favorite city is Cologne, where you have uh, Romanesque churches, um, you have uh, Neo-Gothic, um, you go to Vienna, um, there's the Neoclassical. So there are these many different architectural um, styles, period, um, identifiers, if I can put it that way. What about a favorite building? The one that I found most exciting to photograph, um, in fact, there were two. Um, the one is the Experimental uh, Music uh, um, Project Museum in uh, Seattle, um, a Frank Gehry building, which allows you, coming back to Leon's point, to explore and to actually become involved in um, a very profound way mm. um, working out the implications of this use of, and I can't find a better word, postmodern spaces. Um, the spaces are um, organized in ways that are actually deliberately non-conventional, um, non-symmetrical. So they pose a geometric challenge, oh, yes, and that's what I love about that. Um, the other one is also um, a Frank Gehry building. It's the um, starter center, which of course is where computer science and uh, such things are housed at um, MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, for very similar reasons. Raphael, um, also looking through your photographs, you have a, 
a wide selection of uh, different types of compositions. But the, the, the key things that strike me is the, the amount of detail that you include in the images. It's detail rich and also uh, highly saturated and strong contrast uh, in, in all of your images. Is that something that, uh, that has always been around or is it a style that you've developed over time? Um, it's a style that I've developed over time, but it's also something that speaks to me. I'm very fond of uh, um, bright colors, um, getting colors to work together. Um, I'm also particularly interested in the um, geometries of whatever it is that I'm photographing. Um, if I can just uh, digress for a moment, I think photographers very broadly, um, a bit like mathematicians, come in roughly two types. Um, instead of mathematicians, they're either um, algebraists or geometers. I think with photographers, they're either geometers or narrators. Now, obviously, we want to be something of both if you're going to be um, an all-round photographer. But my own tilt is geometrical, and um, I think it's my disposition to see things in terms of the geometry that actually um, takes hold of me. Just quickly explain to us what you mean by that, geometers and nar narrators. Um, narrators are very good at picking up people's stories. Um, lots of good street photography um, has a narrative dimension to it. Um, you can see in a well-taken photograph of somebody who's had, for instance, a hard life, um, the lines of experience, the lines of wisdom, maybe the lines of pain. Um, and perhaps even some intimations of pleasure. Um, and so what you're really doing is um, taking a photograph that fits into a larger story. A lot of uh, group photography as well, families, etc., have that character. Um, geometrical photography, on the other hand, um, focuses much more on structure. Um, Clearly, one can bring the two together, and I want to just emphasize the importance here of looking at the history of photography and drawing inspiration from it. Um, the photographer who's influenced me most, um, not just in terms of my architectural photography, but more broadly, um, is uh, a relatively less well-known um, German photographer, Germaine Krull. Um, her command of structure is, I think, um, peerless. Um, Man Ray says at the time in Paris that there were only two great photographers in the world, himself, naturally, um, and Germain Krull. Yeah, never one for modesty, was he? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Raphael, um, on, on that, I'd, I'd like to maybe delve a little bit deeper into uh, a point that you mentioned, uh, looking at other people's work, and, and I see your reference, um, fine art, and especially work um, by Hieronymus Bosch that I picked up, uh, it's very finely detailed, uh, grand images that, that really draw you in. Uh, you can look at it from far and you, look, you can look at it close up and, and it offers information in both, uh, both uh, what do you call it, uh, viewing distances, both levels of interaction. Uh, would you say that that is something that you you'd, uh, specifically build in where you, where you want to imbue the image with more and more texture? What is your thinking behind that? Um, that's very much uh, a function of situation and circumstance, but um, my disposition is to build a lot of detail in. Um, and that's why in architectural photography, um, lenses, for instance, matter more perhaps than they do in certain other kinds of genres. Um, you do want to get the detail in, and especially if the detail um, is important in terms of what it tells you about the world, because the way I see photography is that it's not just you know, taking snaps of you know, things that are there. Um, it's also, in a very important way, a kind of interventionist um, exercise. You shape the way that others come to see um, whatever it is that you've experienced or seen. Um, so it'll depend very much on what I'm wanting to do. Um, and also, to go back to Cartier-Bresson, again, the greats, um, in a way, the photograph takes me. Um, I see something there, and immediately I say to myself, yes, this is a photograph. This is something that's going to be, if I get it right, a keeper. Very important, I found, um, is to do research. Um, if I'm going to be doing a particular church, for example, in Cologne, um, I want to read up about the history of that church. Um, I want to spend a lot of time exploring it. You're listening to brandlive.co.za.
Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Yeah. Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastdownmedia.co.za Yes, yes, guess who got brands talking? Brandlife.co.za Rafael, we heard that you're a professor of political science. Please give us some background on how you started in photography. Um, it was actually after my father died when I was very young. Um, I took to painting and drawing. Um, there was always that visual um, aspect to my way of being in the world. Um, I'm a very visual person, and I think it was kind of therapeutic. Um, and then when I got that hand-me-down camera, I was hooked. Um, I realized that uh, photography was a way in which I could uh, not just record the world um, as I passed through different parts of it, um, but could also interpret it and represent it in um, interesting ways to others. Um, my interest also was very much in science and technology, and photography for me brought together um, a number of important dimensions. It brought art, which I was very interested in the history of. Um, it brought science, which I loved, and technology, which I was always fascinated by, together. And in a way that allowed me to bring these three um, elements into a relationship with the world around me. So photography for me um, also allows me to make quite a lot of social commentary. And um, if you look through my Flickr stream, you will see that I often make social commentary of one sort or another. I try to make it subtly, not in your face, but um, it's there either implicitly or sometimes explicitly. Um, Raphael, about that, your social commentary and everything else, obviously the, the, the more subtle version of that commentary often comes also in the form of, of layered meaning and symbolism. Uh, maybe describe a little bit more of, of your process of how you do that. Well, let me give you a simple example, and it's not strictly architectural photography. It was actually taken from the top of the Carlton Center. I've got a photograph of the sun sinking in the west, um, which is one of my personal favorites. And um, I took that fairly recently, um, last year, as I saw global political crises um, arising. And I was thinking at the back of my mind, are we witnessing the decline of the West? Um, I saw the sun sinking, this red orb, um, in the West. And I photographed it and um, saw it as, in a, a very indirect way, symbolizing um, what I sensed might be the decline of a particular civilizational order. I think one of the problems that you can run into with mm. architectural photography is perhaps people don't see the symbolism behind it. It might just be interpreted as a photo of the sun setting, is it not, though? Um, that's why I often add comment to uh -huh. my photographs, um, because the photograph is carrying um, many messages um, in the sense that each person will see a different message in it. Um, and this, I think, raises an interesting question about the relationship between the photographer's um, understanding of what he or she is doing and the perceiver's um, sense of what it is that um, he or she is um, seeing. With any type of art, of With course. Any type when of you put art. it out there, it's out in the public. It's the That's public's right. opinion. You lose, you lose control of the interpretation that others make of your work. But I do try to control my architectural photography in certain ways. One of the key things is the emphasis on line, on um, symmetry, as Leon was saying earlier, on, um, on structure. I'm a very strongly um, structural thinker. Um, my thinking is, uh, um, in terms of visual art, um, very strongly geometrical. So I tend immediately to be arrested by the geometry. Um, very important, coming back to Leon's um, point, is um, also to see, firstly, the connection between architectural photography and other photography. For instance, um, human figure photography um, is 
in a way, for me, an extension of architectural photography. You're dealing with geometries that are both symmetrical and also at the same time challengingly non-symmetrical. Think back to those sketches of Leonardo da Vinci's. Um, they bring that art extremely well. Um, it also intersects with what I might call cityscape or mm. more general urban um, photography. Um, interior photography um, tells you something about the way in which certain spaces have been organized for certain purposes, whether it's in homes or in museums. And of course, I love doing museum photography, and that really sort of rolls into, if I can so put it, uh, my architectural work. Well, Roger Ballen made an interesting point in, in Dorps, noting that some of the arrangements of the, the interior arrangements of certain structures that he uh, took, um, the people, their personality on the walls, if they could take that, put it in a museum in Europe, that would be an exhibition in itself. Yes, and that's really what I try to do when I do interior work, which is why you asked about a favorite building, why I so like the experimental uh, music uh, um, project museum in Seattle. Um, it allows you to do amazing things with interior spaces. Um, and as you move around it, the character of the spaces changes and the purposes and functions. One of the buildings that I really like to photograph in Johannesburg is the Circa Gallery. Um, close to Jellico Street, contains these amazing uh, upward lines, leading lines, mm. shadow contrast. Mm. Do you have a favorite building in Joburg? In Johannesburg, uh, not really. Um, my favorite building is um, the building that I'm photographing at that particular moment, or the structure that I'm photographing at that moment. Um, that's the answer that Yitzhak Perlman, the violinist, gave um, to somebody who asked him, what is your favorite piece? He said, the one I'm playing um, at any moment. Um, and I think that has to do with the fact that it's not just, you know, representing, it's also creating. And one of the things that I love doing, by the way, is abstract um, architectural photography. Um, not least, and I particularly like here using my new um, Fujifilm X-T2, um, I like doing double exposures. So I can bring um, geometrical forms together in um, very carefully controlled ways. And the last thing I'd like to say is that in all my photographic work, um, I like to do a lot of thinking about what I um, am doing. Um, sometimes, of course, you've got to think very fast and on your feet, especially in architectural photography. You've got no control over circumstances. So you've got to think on the spot. Um, but just to come back to um, one last photograph, um, the building that I photographed in Vienna, which I rather like, um, the Austrian Parliament building, um, I looked online afterwards, and I don't want to sound boastful, but I can't find a better photograph of it. Um, and I got a lot of compliments from people abroad saying how good it was. And it really was a matter of um, negotiating uh, minus 8 degrees temperature, so um, one freezes up very quickly, working out which was going to be the best POV. And um, I decided to include the um, electrical cables and lines and all that stuff. And that somehow made it better than people who tried to get rid of that. I also didn't want to do a square on. So I took it um, from um, an angle so that I could get both um, the uh, um, adjacent sides um, in not just focus, but also in proportion. Um, so, again, architectural pho photography, very important, is um, to be sure that you get your perpendiculars right, that you um, actually do get your hor horizons right. One of the things that irritates me in some um, architectural photography is people not bothering to, in Lightroom, whatever they're using, making sure that the um, horizontals are horizontal. Um, just, um, just maybe as a as a final question um, and something practical for our listeners as well. While you shooting, uh, how much do you shoot uh, as close as you wanted to in the camera and uh, in terms of your color rendition or black and white? And and how much do you go um, and edit to to what point? Because when we presented with images online, we 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 only see the final product. But how how does that process look for you and and what what tips maybe could you have for our listeners well i do as much uh, straight out of camera work as i can 
Um, so that what I do in Lightroom, which is the program I mostly use for architectural work, um, is very, very limited. Um, just making sure that the horizontals are horizontal and sometimes working a little on exposure. Um, again, it's a question of choice of lenses. Um, I do have a favorite lens for um, default architectural photography, which is the 16 millimeter WR that um, Fujinon make, um, a terrific lens for architectural photography. Um, but I've also, of course, uh, found that one has to very often shoot long, and it depends entirely upon what it is that you're wanting to um, capture. Um, I do prefer using primes for photography for architectural work, um, not least because of the um, sharpness. And also, um, I'm reminded of Ernst Haas's, um, Ernst Haas's famous uh, line. Um, when asked what the best uh, focal length was for a lens he was going to buy, his answer was, your feet. So <laughs> I do a lot of footwork when I do architectural photography, so it's good exercise. Um, and one very last thing, um, I also love doing night architectural photography. And one of the um, most important things there is to prevent light bleed from a building that is being floodlit um, into the ambient um, uh, surrounds. So um, working on your exposure settings is um, absolutely critical. So from a technical point of view, thinking about lenses and thinking about um, optimal exposure um, are the two most important uh, for me. Follow us on SOC underscore life, both on Facebook as well as Instagram. We will share all Raphael's social media links. Thank you, gentlemen. It is uh, always a pleasure to chat to you. Raphael, thank you for joining us in studio. Um, Maybe we should share our social media handles with the listeners. Thank you very much indeed for having me here. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And of course, we'd love to talk about architectural photography all day, but I realize we don't have all day to do it in. <laughs> How can we follow uh, you, Raphael? Um, you can follow me on Flickr. I run a, an active um, Flickr gallery. Um, Flickr is the best in um, the sense that it's not necessarily my best work, but um, the resolution of the images is excellent. Um, Facebook always degrades the um, resolution somewhat. Um, I do use Instagram, um, but I don't use Instagram an awful lot. Um, but I have got about 80 or 90 pictures on the Instagram. I've got 775, I believe, on Flickr. But Flickr is the best. Um, and then for those who don't want to go through the hassle of a Yahoo account, um, there's Flick River. And Flick River algorithmically decides what my most interesting photographs are. <laughs> I don't always agree with Flick River's algorithm, but um, you know, against algorithm, I have no power. <laughs> Uh, you can find me, uh, Leon, at leonslens.com or otherwise on Flickr, also Leon's Lens. And on Instagram, I'm just straightforward, Leon Westhazen. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Fark1 as well as on uh, Flickr, also Fark1. Yeah. And if I can just add one thing, um, I always go under my name, Raphael de Cut, so it makes life easy for people trying to find me. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.